Hi, welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. We are live on Blog Talk Radio. You are either listening to us there or on iTunes. If you're on Facebook today, hi everybody who's live. Hey Amanda. Um, hi Lori. Hey you guys. Um, welcome to today's show. Uh, you know, you know, it's so funny creating radio shows because I could actually talk about 15,000 things that are up for me right now. And tomorrow I'm starting a school business, so I'm like, let's talk about business, because I like do business all the time, but it's just this like integrated thing in my life. So if you're watching on Facebook Live, we're going to have people in and out of the pool. The only reason I'm not doing it outside today is because uh, we have people in the pool, and they're incredibly loud. Um, so anyway, ah, you know, actually, my the topic today let me go even go look what the topic is today. What's the topic today? Using failure to create your empire. Um, I seriously came up with like 16 titles for today's show. I could literally talk about this in any direction. So if you are live and you have questions, please put them in the chat. Keep in mind I can only see four lines, so you got to keep them succinct. Um, but yeah, so I've got a few questions that I want to start with today, and, um, and then let's see where we go. So Ken is asking, is it better for me to focus on one or two options or take all the opportunities in front of me? I lean towards the latter, but I only have so many eggs and a lot of baskets. So what I would first destroy and uncreate is the I only have so many eggs and so many baskets. Everything that is, can we destroy and uncreate all that? Times a godzillion. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, buck, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Hi, you guys. It's so good to see you. Um, so... Every point of view you take creates your reality. One of the reasons that I call this show um, Using Failure to Create Your Empire is that because I've probably failed at business more than I've succeeded, and yet I'm still creating it and I'm like doing really, really well. Hi, Patty. I, I literally talk to so many people around business that like don't, hi Saskia, that don't start because of so many different reasons. Like it doesn't even matter what the reasons are. It's just I don't want to start because reasons. Um, and even yesterday I was getting into a conversation with my roommates about this new business that we want to create, which is really creating this, this house that we want to live in, but also this house that we want to create as a possibility in the world. We are all really, really interested in um, creating a place to live that's, not off the grid per se, but like really self-sustaining and, and creates with the earth instead of against the earth. And we got into this conversation a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, randomly. I, I think, well, this house is awesome that we live in and um, I'll, you'll be getting a tour from the pool party that we have this coming Saturday. And um, But the landlady that owns this place is really a pain in the ass and she has been for quite some time. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Adama. And... Um, so we've been in this constant conversation of like, okay, so what's next? Where do we want to live next? What are we doing? Ne like, what's what do we want to create next, really? And that's kind of an ongoing, not kind of, that is an ongoing question in my world. And actually, one of the things that you can use to create your business dynamically, it's like, what do I want to create in the world? What do I desire to create as my life and as my business? Because business and life aren't separate. Like, I was, I was you know, I think one of the things that's going on for me with these whole business conversations is that, they don't, I've separated into like the school of business, but it's not the school of business. It's actually the creation of your life. That's actually what it is because business is not separate from my life. Um, this week has been incredibly like busy with getting the house ready for guests and we've been live streaming classes here. So we've had people over and we had a big party on Saturday. We've got 10 people staying with us for the upcoming Symphony of Possibilities in Vancouver this weekend. So we've been like, I've been outside of the house a lot, planting flowers and buying stuff and making sure we have towels and, you know, contributing to all of that. And, um, I used to not, like when I was first starting this online business, I used to like almost make myself sit at my computer like all day, every day, just to make sure that I like had my attention on all my creations so that they would grow. And since I've really started pulling energy and like adding that practice into my life with business, um, I'm getting that the more I'm willing to live my life, to actually celebrate my life and living, the more my business grows. And even if a particular creation doesn't grow in the way I decided it should, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean I'm going to die. It doesn't mean any that I'm a failure. It doesn't mean anything. Hi, Aubrey. So really like using failure to create your empire. It's like, first of all, you really have to start looking at where you've decided that if this, if A plus B doesn't occur and C gets created, you're a failure. Hi, Alexandra. And, um, you got to destroy and create those points of view because those points of view are what's creating your reality. And one of the things I've become really aware of lately is 
these really, really insidious places where I use a reason, I use a story to justify not choosing. Now, that might sound familiar. It's like, yeah, we've heard that before. But it's like, um, oh, gosh, I will, okay, if I can give you an example of that, I will. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, the, and Jessica said, I just love that. You just learn from whatever it is it creates, even if it's a shitty creation. Yeah. And you, you even want to pock and pot shitty because everything creates something. Hi, Kinga. Everything creates something. So this radio show is creating a future for me that I, it's totally undefined. I don't know what, I don't know why, where, you know, it's getting tons of views on Facebook. So lots of people are seeing me. You guys are here. Um, I don't know what future this is creating. I had a lady contact me from out of the blue on YouTube. She watched my YouTube videos and I don't really have a series on YouTube. I have a bunch of like random buckshot videos on YouTube, but you get a sense of me for sure. And uh, she messaged me out of the blue and wanted to do coaching with me. And for private coaching with me, it's like $6,000 unless you buy three months at a time. So it's five grand. And she was like, fine, I'll do it. She just like chose it instantly. But that's after watching me on YouTube for like three, I don't know what it was. Maybe I've only been doing this, I think two years. So she'd been watching me for a while. And um, so, so you could look at like, I mean, you can take a point of view that if you create, <laughs> thanks Vicky. You could take a point of view that like my YouTube channel, for example, is not monetized. I don't make any money from that channel per se. I don't have ads on it. I'm not like pushing it really hard. I just, you know, when I create something, I post something on my YouTube and people see it or they don't see it. Um, sometimes I forget to do that. Sometimes I share it. Sometimes I don't. More and more and more, I'm looking at how can I integrate and intertwine all of my stuff so that a lot of people get their eyes on it. Like that's a future creation that I'm looking at. So, you know, what can I create as my website that gets my, gets people's eyes on all my stuff? Cause the more eyes, you know, the more possibilities get created. Cause who I am, who you are in the world is a different possibility. I'm a walking different possibility. You are a walking different possibility. So the more eyes you get on you, the more people get to go, what's that? Uh, what is that? What? So yeah, so that. So nothing you create is a failure and none of it's shitty because it all creates something. It'll either create something in your world, it'll create awareness, it'll always create awareness. Um, you know, for example, starting a school of business in the middle of July. I don't know if that was the brightest choice, but I'm just going to keep seeing it through and just keep showing up for it and I will get awareness out of it. And if you don't need and you don't lack money and you're not using your business to beat it to death to get you money, you're going to be able to get from it what you get from it and then move on. So everywhere you've been beating your business to death to give you money, can we destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shorts, boys, It's actually not your business's job to give you money. It's yours. You're the source of creation. And all of these ideas that you have that are multiple streams of possibility for bringing in revenue are where is you are where all that comes from. You're the source of that. You're the font of all these ideas. And then you get to ask the question of like, hey, what can I add? Who or what can I add to actualize this into the world? But you're the source of that. So you want to leave yourself open to the multiple streams of possibility. And then going back to, not going back, so this failure piece, I, um, I had a couple of businesses before I had this uh, online business that I'm doing now that you guys are enjoying and that I get to play with you guys all over the world. Um, I was a restaurateur for three years. I owned a pizzeria. And the way we got into this pizzeria was really, really easy. I was married at the time. She wanted to contribute something. She saw an ad in the paper for a pizzeria and thought it would be a great idea if we opened one. And I said, yes, that's how we got into business for ourselves. I didn't have a business plan. I, I knew how to run a pizzeria vaguely because I'd worked in one. And I was like, yeah, that's enough. So the only thing that I really didn't have any information about or didn't know to educate myself about was how to keep yourself in a, in a business that, whose revenue is going to be kind of low because of, because of all kinds of whatever, um, to keep my expenses down so that I wasn't paying out more than I was bringing in all the time. Well, I didn't have that information and I didn't have the information of like, hey, check out the numbers in this brick and mortar business to see you know, what's actually coming in and to see what's possible and I didn't have questions. So, um, but I got a lot of awareness out of that on how to run a business. Like I can, I, 
running a business is a 24 hour a day job. So the awareness that I got out of that, number one is you have to fucking love it. You have to love it because it owns your ass. If you don't love running a pizzeria and dreaming about a pizzeria and like running staff and scheduling and ordering cheese and working the shifts yourself, do not open a fucking pizzeria because it owns your ass. Gary talked about that on the business call and in Benevolent Capitalism of like, he's like, people go into business with this weird idea that they're not going to be working. He's like, business is a 24-7 thing. That's why you have to love it. So if you're not actively creating what like just is so easy for you to create because it's not work, then you need to go, you need to go choosing that. You need to start looking at what do I just do for fun that if I could create money with it would just like my days would fly by. And that is, that's, I do so many videos. You know why I do videos? Because I fucking love doing videos. Uh, I was looking at my Facebook page. I'm like, Jesus, I'm a prolific creator of videos. Um, I'm looking down at the time here. Uh, so, so online business works for me from all those different points of view. Plus I love, look, I love learning new stuff. I love learning new funnels. I love, I love learning. So that works for me. So, so I learned that from owning a pizzeria is you have to fucking love it. So for me, owning a pizzeria was a big drag because it's a lot of, it was for me a lot of maintenance and a lot of working every day and a lot of like, I just didn't love it. So guess what? That business went bankrupt, which was fine. I learned a lot about that too. I learned about you don't die after your business goes bankrupt. The second business I got into was my own. I was a, basically a consultant. I was a landscape designer. And I started the business before I got out of school from landscape design because I was bored. And I was like, okay, I'm ready to go do this thing now. I didn't know how to do it. I'd never done it before. I just knew that I could. I knew that if somebody gave me a chance that I could make shit up, bullshit enough to get into the door and then figure out whatever the fuck I was doing. Sure enough. I did just that, so I walked in, and you guys have heard this story on the last one, but walked in, started it, hi Elizabeth, um, started it by just getting a job. I just started talking to a person who said, yeah, they needed a me, and I was like, okay, cool, I can do that, and I just started. Now, my drawings got better and better and better over time because I got more and more information about the industry and like, you know, how things actually work and how you take measurements and all that stuff, but I got it by just starting. And um, I realized after I got into that industry that I could technically succeed by doing one or two or three drawings a month because I charged about $1,000 a drawing. And I only required about three grand a month at the time. So, um, so I quickly figured out like what I could actually choose to create my life and living. And then I got awareness of like, well, it would be actually more fun for me in this industry to have a steady paycheck because you get a lot of flurry of activity in the spring and a lot in the winter. Um, but during the middle of the summer, like that's when all the installations are going on. So it'd be way more fun to work for a company that was just paying you all the time for being you, where you could go out on the installations. And so I created that. But it was the choice to start my own thing that actually gave me that information of what I wanted to choose next. Um, and then with starting this business, this was really jumping off the cliff for me because well, I guess I've done a lot of cliff jumping, so pock and pod that. Really, this is very significant. And I, I knew that I n could invite and entice people on Facebook. I knew that a lot of people liked what I had to read. I had no confidence that people were going to actually pay me out of thin air over the internet. Who does that? And yet there was just, you know those choices where there's just like no other choice. You just jump off the cliff and you just do it. I jumped off the cliff. And I can't tell you how many things I've created, how many ideas I've had that have done nothing. Fuck all. I can't tell you how many conclusions I've come to that have therefore killed that creation. So many. So many. And I've gotten awareness out of all of them. I've gotten awareness that I'm a conclusion master of magnitude and I'm getting better at that. You know, I've gotten awareness that when you come to a conclusion about a creation that it's supposed to do a certain thing, you kill it. When you spend the money before your bars class participants show up, you've already got that money spent, those bars class participants cancel and you don't get that money. When you start calculating all the numbers and you start concluding how much money you need, when you need from your business, it doesn't create. So I've gotten all this awareness from just choosing to put shit out there and put shit out there and try it this way and try it that way. I've tried being pathetic, I've tried being awesome, I've tried being, being this way, I've tried being this way. And then there's things that create like pff, magic and, and that's amazing. And so there, I guess what I'm really trying to say is there is no such thing as failure. It's like as soon as you've decided you've failed at something, you've created a decision that you can't create beyond. And so all the decisions, judgments, computations, and conclusions that you have about 
how you've failed, how many times you've failed, and because you've failed, you probably shouldn't blah, blah, blah. Could we please destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, all nine shorts, boys, beyonds. I actually had this running story in my world that I didn't become aware of again until yesterday that I don't finish things and that I constantly, because I don't finish things, I'm a failure. So I'll give you a list of things I have never finished. Um, I didn't finish high school. I was two credits short of graduating, and so I... Um, I got my G GED, which is the equivalency in the United States, instead. Um, I, made, I made the swim team. I tried out for the swim team in ninth grade. I made the swim team. And at my first meet, which is your first like competition, I did a flip turn and I missed the wall. And I never swam in another meet again. I, I was sick for the rest of the meet. So I never participated on the swim team again after one. So I didn't finish that. Um, I went to Bible school when I was 25. And I didn't finish that. I didn't fully get my degree because there was all this reading we had to do that I didn't want to do. And they were making it, they were being really linear about it and blah, blah, blah. So I didn't finish that. Um, I was married for the first time. I didn't finish that marriage. We got divorced after five years. And then I was married for the second time and I didn't finish that marriage. So I, in my own world, had a list of things that I failed at. I have failed flagrantly for the last 42 years. And look at my life. <laughs> Actually, I didn't know this conversation was going there, but it totally is. And so, so really the bigger conversation is like, where are you judging yourself out of just choosing to create your life? What are you doing? Why are you doing it? <laughs> I didn't even realize that was the conversation. Everything that is, will you just write and create it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, black, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. I have failed so much over my life, especially according to this reality, right? I'm supposed to be stay married. I'm supposed to like deal with it. I'm supposed to do all these things. I just was like, fuck it. It's not fun for me to do. The only thing I didn't have back then was, a, was the tools to not judge myself. So I judged myself a lot, like really, really, really hard. And now I'm getting that what I thought was so wrong about me is actually what's right about me. And, and the what's right about me gives me the freedom to choose and change like that. Like as soon as something's not working, as soon as something's not creating what I want it to create, I fucking change it. And that's what Gary's, he's like, you just got to, he's like, that's the way to create business. He's like, if you're not willing to create like that, then you're not willing to be aware because Everything changes that fast. The world changes that fast. The earth changes that fast. Trends change that fast. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen that SoundCloud is like laying off 40% of their workforce and like a bunch of us have stuff on SoundCloud. So you have to be willing to see like, like the online and the virtual world especially changes all the time. And having that awareness of how things change all the time is actually your biggest superpower. That is, that is your biggest strength. And as you start to choose and create your thing, there's no right way to do it. There's just your way to do it. And as we were having this conversation um, yesterday about the house with, with Carlina and Torsten, and I was having Carlina, I asked her for some pock and potting on some stuff because I got, I was stopping myself from actually, you know, creating. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Severina. Hi, you guys. Um, um, I started realizing that... Um, I will get to your question, Catherine. I started realizing that I have a way of creating that doesn't match anything in this reality. Nothing. My basic point of view about creating is what's the fastest and the easiest way to get there. That's my basic point of view. That's where I create from. So like when I needed a car and I got the, I created the Mercedes, um, I had not been creating a car for like four or five months, like just not. I had all kinds of reasons and justifications and whatever. And then in two days I was like, no, this is occurring. And in two days, I created a car like that with zero down and with the perfect financing and ease, 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 ease. Um, that, and, and so when I'm creating as me, that's my basic point of view about creation is like, well, this is dumb. I'm going to go around this and do it a different way. I never know what that different way is, but what I always know is that there's another way that's faster and easier. And I just function like that. And we actually, we have a friend of ours at the house this weekend streaming the ESB with us and you know, she's like, God, it's such a contribution just being here, just seeing how you guys create. And I'm like, yeah, there's no, there's no thinking in our creation. It's like, we, so we have this really big house. It's like 4,000 square feet and um, we, it's a big house and we're on, we're online all the time. And so we, Kim, I'm talking about you. <laughs> 
So anyway, we, we had one internet right upstairs. Well, one internet for all of us is not enough. It was knocking people off when we were uploading things and whatever. And so Carlina finally messaged us in our little Facebook thread for our house and goes, hey, I'm thinking we'll just get another set of it. We'll get another internet in here. What do you guys get? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So within, I don't even know how long, 24 hours, we had called somebody and we have another set of internet in here now. We have two internets in this house, but just like that. And, you know, I looked over at Carlina the other day. I'm like, hey, you want to create a foundation with me? She's like, yeah, that's late. Let's do it. So within 24 hours, we had a foundation on the book. So that way of creating, of just like not waiting, just choosing yes or no, choosing, 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 that creates my business faster than anything else I could give you. Like that is actually the secret superhuman shortcut tool to a business that thrives with total ease is, is choosing and being willing to be that fast and not thinking. And that was the thing that I made myself wrong for before. Well, that was one of the things for sure. I was labeled as spontaneous as, um, not spontaneous. What's the other like critical term there? It's not spontaneous. It's like irresponsible, flaky, you know, all those other things. And when in fact, it's like the biggest piece of my makeup that, that creates my life. And the second piece of that is like, I choose without needing the money in place. I just choose because I choose because I choose. And then I go, what's it going to take for me to, yeah, impulsive. Yeah. What's it going to take for the money to show up? And I, I demand of myself that I generate and create that. And guess it always shows up because I'm always willing to demand that of myself. So that's business created from like the space of no thinking and just choice, just choice and choice and choice. And Gary talked about that at, um, at benevolent capitalism. He's like the, the fastness, the fastness that we're all looking for, that speed that we're all looking for comes with that willingness to go truth. What will this create? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. I'm in not knowing how things are going to show up, not knowing how to do it, just knowing that it's going to expand your future and that it matches. And you know that instantly. It's no, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to get into your body to sense it or slow it down like that. You just know it's yes or no. Yes. Okay. Done. And, um, so, so moving forward on like a big project, like anything you've defined as big or solid or too hard or big, like we all want these businesses that in five years were like speaking to millions of people. Some of us do, you know, with these big energies, we go into this overwhelm instead of just going, okay, so what's next? Who can I talk to about this? Um, which is what I'm going to start doing with this house. Cause I get that right now the house creation, which could be a business creation, which could be anything still seems a little big. You know, I've decided it's big. I've decided it's hard somewhere, but you know, what's going to change that is just choosing, choosing to go talk to the city planner, choosing to go talk to architects, choosing to, to start conversations with other people, choosing, choosing, choosing is going to outcreate that. Do you know how I know? Cause I've experienced it over and over and fucking over in my own life. All just constantly I've experienced that. So now I have experience with choosing out creates any fear, choosing out creates doubt, choosing out creates overwhelm, choosing out creates, it's my fucking next call. Um, that is like the, the secret tool to overcoming any, anything you've got going on, just choosing, you know, and that, cause it, it adds these energies into your world. Like if I, when I go choose to talk to the city tall or city planner or whatever in Vancouver that I need to talk to, to find out about, you know, what's possible with these properties in West Vancouver, I'm going to get a whole bunch of information. When I go choose to talk to some people about financing for housing, how does that even work with you? What are the different possibilities for financing? What, are, what, have, what haven't I considered? That's when I'm going to start getting all this information and all these energies are going to be. And that tells the universe that I'm serious about this choice. I am actually choosing it. I'm moving on it, which then the universe can come in and support everything that I'm creating. That's how you create a business. That's how you get beyond anything you've decided you failed at. And your failures have actually given you incredibly valuable information if you will let them. Like I'm, the more I talk about this topic of failure and the more I look at my life, which I literally up to last year probably decided was one big failure. Really, honestly, 41 years, just wash. It was just a wash, you know, a fucking waste of time, waste of breath. Here I am, finally I have some tools and a life that I can be proud of. And the more that I live and the more that I get into allowance of me and stop judging me, which is happening more and more and more, I'm creating that. I have to acknowledge that. <laughs> the more I get the gift of all of my choices and the more I get the gift of failure and it's not even failure is the thing. You know, all the shit that I decided I didn't finish, what was I aware of? What was I aware of? What was I actually aware of? 
what was actually true for me that I wasn't acknowledging, right? All of that stuff. And what information do I now have now in this 10 seconds with all this awareness that I've invited into my universe to create a future? Because I have information about what it takes to create a future with business that I'm implementing now. And I think this is one of the first times that I'm fully acknowledging that. I have a lot of information from what I've chosen. And so do you. So do you. If you will allow everything in your life that you've chosen that got you here to be a contribution from the point of view of like, what information do I actually have in my world that would inform and enliven and create a totally different future for me? You will be surprised at what shows up for you. Your, your route here to this moment in time is not an accident. It was an orchestration by you. Every single thing that you've chosen in your life got you to hear, not just from the point of view of, wow, it was a total gift that I'm still alive. So yes, there's that. But I'm starting to see now in my life how every single thing that I chose from being in a worship band, seemingly unrelated choices, being in hospitality for 20 years, being on the worship team, playing music, um, going to China and smuggling Bibles, going to jail for eight days, owning two businesses, um, being sexually abused, having a mother who's clinically crazy, you know, all of this stuff in my life is actually what's giving me all of the savvy, all of the awareness, all of the willingness to choose, all of the, the willingness to fail. Because I'm like, I failed so much, I don't have a point of view about it anymore. It's like, oh, well, that didn't create what I wanted it to create. So what else? That capacity to just get back up and choose again, right? You have those too. And yours look different than mine. Your life has looked different than mine. But this is the gift of failure and this is what you can start to use to build your empire. It's like, how can everything that I've chosen so far contribute to multiple possibility streams, multiple revenue streams? What is it that I know about stuff that I've never even considered using? What conversations can I get into that will give me different awareness about what I can choose and be in the world that I've never considered? Start asking for that and then start choosing and creating. If you were creating any one of your businesses to have a future beyond you, your bars business, I don't care what business it is, your facelift business, your certified facilitator business, your coaching business, your whatever business it is, if you were creating it with a future and you weren't at needing it to be your sole source of income, what could you start instituting today? What sorts of things could you start instituting today? You know, I've never seen somebody create a bars business from the point of view of being an expert on bars. I've never seen that occur. I've never seen somebody create a facelift business and actually position themselves and get a PR agent and talk about the energetics of facelift. What have you not considered? What have you eliminated as a possibility because you're so busy being small that you're not allowing yourself to be the ask and the space that you can actually choose and be as you. Your business is not actually separate from you. I know there's a lot of conversations about um, your business as an entity and you can talk to it. And if you do that, that's cool. It's not that you're wrong. It's that when you're willing to let there be no separation, when you're willing to let there be no separation and you are your business and your business is you and it's the creation of your life, then something else opens up. There's a different possibility available to you. And you can be the institutor of a totally different future and beyond what anybody else has done, if you're willing. You just have to choose that. You know, I love the story that Gary tells in one of his books of like somebody who hired, I love the PR agent story where she hired a PR agent. And I don't know what she was doing at the time, but it wasn't what I'm doing. It was something else. And her business radically changed overnight. Like almost three months later, she had a totally different business. And Gary's like, what did you change? And she's like, I just made a different choice. You have different choices available to you that nobody else in the world has that don't have to make sense to anybody else. That if you're willing to make them, will transform what you're creating in the world. So I think I have like 60 seconds left and I could just battle on at you for another 25 hours. But thank you for being here. I know I didn't get to your questions. I'm sorry. I hope this is a contribution. And um, if you're interested in like really having these weekly conversations on a monthly basis, we start the School of Business tomorrow. So jump in. I'll put a link with the video. You guys are awesome. If you like this, share it. And um, I hope you have a fucking phenomenal, fucking phenomenal day. Bye.